Hello. Hi, Denise. Can you hear me? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, first, give me your idea, your, your, your vision of the cafe, and then separately give me your uh, conception of the foundation. Cafe first. Okay. okay. Uh, the One World Cafe vision is to provide organic food to whoever wants to eat it, to eliminate waste in the food industry, and to uh, eliminate hunger through our volunteer options and to build community. Uh, the cafe's been in existence for three and a half years and our, our volunteer program has really developed over the years so we now can teach people how to do dishes, prep, or cook in an apprentice program so they can go on to, to have better lives and get better jobs in the food industry. What do you think the cafe does for the community overall? What the cafe does for the community overall is that it, it's almost like a safe haven. People know that they can come there any day of the week. We have fresh, organic, home-cooked food that, um, that they can create a plate, and if for some reason they were short of money, they, they could volunteer with us, which is very pleasant, and, and eat. And eat in, in basically community because of, it's just everyone from, from everywhere wants to eat there. So it's not an isolation. It's not a, a cold bologna sandwich on white bread. It's a hot, nourishing meal, organic, uh, gourmet, family-style uh, dishes eaten with everyone else. Tell me about how you pay your cooks a living wage. How do you do that? I mean, not, not the nuts and bolts of it, but why do you do it? I believe in a living wage because, and pay a living wage because I, I believe that a person that is, is working a, 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 a possible minimum wage job should be able to support themselves and just live independently, and it's very important for me to offer that to my employees. Okay, and um, about your employees, um, the cooks especially seem to like the freedom that they have to uh, have uh, different things to prepare every day. I mean, why, why do you let them do that? Well, we believe in cooking with the seasons and also being, cre and also being creative in our cooking. Most cooks they have to cook the same thing over and over and over again. So when they go into work, they're really brain dead. They turn off instead of turning on and, and putting the, the love and good energy and, and creativity into the food. And so, you know, we allow that every day, all day long. Whoever puts together dishes can be creative and awake and, and vibrant and excited about the things that they're making and also excited about serving those those items to the public. Okay, good. Now tell me about the One World Everybody Eats Foundation. What is it? The One World Everybody Eats Foundation is is a foundation that I put together um, that will enable us to, it's a nonprofit organization that will enable us to put in more cafes worldwide. Why is that important? It's important because it's, it's, it's part of the, our mission to eliminate world hunger, and not just by providing a handout, but a hand up and a way for people to, to eat really good food that normally couldn't afford it. And these cafes can, can allow so many more people to pay just, a, you know, a regular, what they would pay in another restaurant, but but to get really good pesticide-free, hormone-free, um, antibiotic-free food. But your idea is not just to have these cafes in the United States. That's correct. I'd like, like to have these cafes worldwide. We're going to start with um, a good maybe 10 cafes in the U.S. to form an infrastructure. Uh, we'd like to put one in every city in the world, but we're going to start with New York, we're going to go to D.C., and we're going to go to Pittsburgh, 
and uh, some some different different cities: Iowa City, Chicago, St. Paul, Boston. Pretty ambitious. <laughs> well, hopefully you haven't seen anything yet, but <laughs> that just <laughs> and then we want to branch out from there, but but that'll give us a good start so that we can eventually go into some third world countries, India or wherever, where people, there may be a, a, a larger percentage of people that need to volunteer for their meal. And, and so we'll probably be able to, to set up the idea is that we'll, we'll have some co- almost like cottage industries in place where maybe we sell aprons now at our cafe here in America. So people, let's say in India, can volunteer by making aprons or products that we can sell in the more first world and second world countries to supplement, you know, the cafes in third world countries. Now, you you don't really care who else does this, do you? No, I do not. Why not? Because I feel like this is an inspired idea and it's an idea whose time has come or come back and so I'm not going to sit on it and uh, franchise it or trademark it or whatever and I'm going to encourage more people to do it whether there they're, they're are foundations or just you know theirs I'm going to help them all I can to put more of these in let me ask you something one of the things that makes the cafe unique is the fact that you've got this box sitting in the middle of the of the uh, room where people can drop cash in to represent how much they paid for for their meal. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a lot of trust. Why did you decide to do it that way? Well, I, I, um, I wanted people to price their own meals, and I was just really sick of a, a cash register. I wanted people to, to be able to choose their own portions. So, and I really felt like it, it was against like a sacred rule to weigh food and sell it to, by the weight. Uh, that didn't sit with me at all. So I came up with just uh, price your own. I mean, that was, well, I shouldn't say I came up with it. That was like my field of dreams moment. Go to donation. Let people price their own food. So once I shifted to that, then I realized, aha, you know, people are choosing their own portions or pricing their own meals. We have zero waste, and then I was like, gosh, there's so much waste, you know, in America with food, and we're, we're not having any, you know, uh, because we're letting people price their own, and we're not encouraging people to overeat. There's so so many diseases from, from people overeating or eating over-processed foods. Well, we're not encouraging any of that, and we don't serve processed foods. Do you think people, do you think people don't listen to their own inspiration? Oh, absolutely. I'm not one of the few people in the world to be given a, a an inspiring idea. I refuse to believe that. I think everybody is given many opportunities in their lifetime to to reach a point where they're they're really living their higher purpose, which I believe this this is mine. So, but we just talk ourselves out of it, or ignore it, or think, oh, that's too crazy. And what the only credit I really like taking is that. I didn't talk myself out of it, you know. I was like, okay, I'll try it. Denise, is there any evidence that you're changing anybody's life? I've come to realize is that as human beings, we like to connect. We like to connect to people. Some people choose just to connect to their significant other or their family members, and other people reach out to more of a, a, a larger community or worldwide community. Well, these cafes reach out to people, and they change lives because people feel like they're part of a larger um, community that cares about them, that that it's very nurturing to know, hey, if I'm ever down and out, there is some place I can go. Um, And we do offer, we have our our commitment to zero waste. At the end of the evening, we'll plate up what we have left, and we will give it away, no questions asked. So for whatever reason... Um, that someone doesn't feel like they're in the space to volunteer, there's a chance they can still get a good meal. And uh, you're waiting for nonprofit status from the IRS. Absolutely, and we're very close. It's very terrific, close. Denise. It's, what you're doing is terrific. Well, thank you. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye.